Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about AI and backend. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I want to start a small AI startup with me and, and some other guys. What language should I use for our backend website or for the backend for our website? And the short answer is the thing that most likely is the quickest. Let me explain. So if you're starting, I could, the thing is here, I didn't really get a reply back here because I wrote back and I asked like, but what is the goal here? Is your ambition that this website is going to display company information about what your startup is about? how to get in touch with you. And I guess it's a standard corporate website with a landing page and things of this nature. Or is the idea here that your AI solution, because I'm guessing that you're not just gonna create a program on somebody's laptop and some, there has to be some way to interact with this AI of some sort, right? So is that gonna be happening through a web interface? Let's say for the sake of argument that you have some AI services that you can access through your website, something like that, because the, my answer is going to depend a little bit on which, which it is. So let's just cover both. So in the simple case, let's say for the sake of argument that you're just making a, a corporate website. Most, this is like the lowest level of program, uh, professional grade, what can be considered, let's call it that, what can be considered professional grade software development. This is what most rook, like beginner freelancers and people actually work with. And that is to create a corporate website. And I highly suggest in this case, use the absolute simplest thing that you can possibly imagine. I mean, that's, uh, you can use PHP, Node.js, Ruby on Rails or something like, I mean, shit, if you can get away with using a WordPress site, that's even better. Because what you're doing here is that you just need something that gives you a representation on the internet. You're not building a big scale system that's going to, to be like, growing into some monster type of application. And if you're not doing that, then it's no, there's no reason for you to try to optimize that for scalability, then it's speed that's most important. And that usually go is the way it goes in smaller startups. Speed is the most important thing because without, it doesn't really matter if you create this amazing website in, I don't know, Golang or some, or Java or something like that, where you might have better options for scalability because like it, you're most likely not going to scale. So if whatever you can do to make it go quicker is usually the best way when you're at the small scale because you simply don't have enough code to make things complicated or rather it's very unlikely that your system is going to be all that complicated at the beginning of things. And then the real problem is that you don't have enough money. You don't have funding or you have very sharp deadlines because you can get funding if you meet some requirements on some investor somewhere or something like that. So speed is the most important thing here. But let's say for the sake of argument that it's not just a corporate website. It's also going to be something that people use in order to interact with the system. Well, then we need to think about a little bit of scalability here because I would say that the first thing I would think about is, okay, what language are you using in order to build the AI itself? Now, I'm just gonna guess here that you're going to use something that is fairly high performant because a, it depends on, of course, the scale of the AI system. I mean, if you're gonna build an, the next human brain or something like that, you're probably gonna need something highly, highly optimized to be able to execute code that quickly. But if you're doing something, let's say with machine learning or you're doing something like that, then maybe you're doing this in Python. It depends a little bit on what you're going to use here. But I would ask the first question, is there a way for us to use the same language for our website or this web application that we're gonna build and the AI? Can we use the same language for both? And the reason is very simple because there's actually a quite, few, quite a few benefits to be able to use the same language. Let's say that you were using Python. Uh, Python has support for web application development and it also has great support for machine learning and things of this nature, which means that you can keep yourself on one language, which simplifies your entire development stack. And this is something very good. Generally, you want to 
keep things as simple as possible. Especially because, I mean, if you're gonna hire people, it's easier for you to find someone who knows, say, just Python, than it is for you to find someone who knows, I don't know, C or C++ or Rust or something, and whatever you're using, right? You can find these sorts of people, right? But it's easier to optimize for one workflow or for one, one single language. It's one of those reasons why quite a lot of people will argue that it's a very bad idea to use multiple backend languages in the same code base. Some people will make an argument for microservices and being able to use different languages for different services. And I feel like I'm not gonna <clears throat> go too deep into that, but that's also in general a bad idea, unless you really, really, really need to use a different language, it's in general a better idea to just stay stick with one language for the backend because there are so so many benefits to doing that. All right, so let's but let's say that all right, we're just going to talk about what language would be a good fit for a backend certain language a backend system that's going to host this website, right? That might be interfacing. Let's say that you can't use whatever language that you're using for this machine or for this AI that you're building. Well, then scalability becomes the question again. And scalability is, as I've said in many different videos, it's about two things. Scalability is one part about sustaining the product, like the social scalability of things, scaling people, scaling uh, testing and regression bug, uh, regression testing, and like all of these different various things that has to do with the organizational scaling. And then you have the second thing, which is performance. Now, of these two, generally, the first one is the most important one. Scaling and having performance issues is usually not much of a problem when you're dealing with web applications and things of this nature. Because let's say for the sake of argument that your AI system, I mean, that's gonna have to be extremely optimized if you're going to do it in any type of time, like if it's gonna work efficiently, but you might be running that service or that's, that program on a highly optimized virtual machine somewhere on the cloud and you might be just sending requests to it, right? Or schedule jobs, which is going to be sent to that system through this web application. So that web application doesn't actually have to have the most highly optimized performance. It just needs to be a very scalable solution so that you can build a nice web interface for the users and that you can keep the code clean, right? Which is honest to God, usually the case for most companies out there. So in that scenario, languages such as say Java, C Sharp, personal favorite, this is a, maybe be a little bit out there for some people would be, I would say Node with TypeScript, which is I really, really like, it scales very, very well. You can, but you, like any typed language with a little bit of maturity and fairly good support that a lot of people know is a very good fit for basically any backend system that you need to scale. Simply because one part, it's stable, there's a lot of libraries and support that you can get from from the internet or from the community. And the second thing is that it's easy to get people, f to new developers that know how to do this or know how to work with this stack, which is more important usually where, when you want to scale up than having something that is extremely niche and extremely bleeding edge or something that is high performance. Usually you go for high performance type of things such as for, in this scenario, the AI program. But here you might really, you might actually have people who are really, really specialized in this or you're going for some high performance service somewhere. You might rewrite that part of the system if it's too slow in something like say C sharp into, I don't know, highly optimized Rust code or C, C code or something like that, just to get the performance of that part, but the remaining parts of the system stay in this nice, easy, scalable language that you picked. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're building something like this, where you have a, like an AI or something that is a, a program that is highly, highly specialized, that most likely is going to require quite a lot of specialists working on it or something that is fairly sophisticated, what, and you wanna build a website for this, the first thing you should ask, am I building something that's going to be connected to this product? If you're not, if you're just building a corporate website or something like that, that's just gonna show your company, then go for the simplest fucking thing that you can think about. Use web WordPress, use Django, use Gatsby, use whatever the fuck you want, because you, it's just a display of information. Most likely you're never gonna touch that after you've deployed it. 
But if you are building something that's going to be connected to this highly specialized system, then I highly encourage you to ask, can I use the same language? If you're using Python, that should be a fairly feasible thing. If you're using C, it might not be the best thing because it's kind of hard to build a good scalable web service in C. But if, let's say for the sake of argument, that you are not going to be able to use the same language, such as if you were using C or something like that, well, then you should split your AI application or your AI code into a special like isolated part or that program should run in on its own on most likely optimized hardware to be able to execute as quickly as possible. But the server side language that the users are actually going to interact with in order to talk to your system is going to be, a, is, should likely be something like uh, C++ or Java or some typed language with a fair, a fair amount of maturity and a fair high fairly high adoption rate. So you can actually scale not just from the performance perspective, but also from the company perspective so that you can add more people and to get them productive fairly quickly. Have a great day.